So today we're gonna go over how to disbud and tattoo baby goats. These girls have been given their banamine, so we've been waiting on that to kick in, and the iron has been heating up while that's been working. And if you notice, there are bad haircuts. The lighting's not great in here, I know, but um, we shave around the nubs. You, This is optional, you don't have to, but it does help you see where the horn nubs are and also, if you touch hair with the iron, it creates smoke. And when that smoke gets in your eyes, it really burns. So I think it's safer if you shave the hair away. That way you can see what you're doing the entire time and see where you need to put the iron. So one extra thing I do is I use this uh, piece of a sock. It's just the uh, elastic part cut off. And I will put this on over their head and it will hold their ears back for me so I don't accidentally touch the iron to the ear because when they move especially with the Nigerians sometimes the ears will get very close to the iron so I just started using this at the end I put on some alu shield which is just an aluminum bandage um, because I do pop off the caps you don't have to use the bandage but i feel better because they do sometimes start to scratch at it after a day or two just because it's itchy um and i don't want them getting dirt and debris and stuff up in the disbudding area so i put the bandage on and they have been good to go so far they will go into this disbudding box which i have some towels in the bottom for the nigerians since they're a little short um but this will just hold the kids still and their head comes out here. So then I'm able to hold the head and do the disbudding without the kid jumping all over the place. Okay, so we have the sock to keep the ears. Then you just put their head here. And close it up before they start moving too much. They do jump, so I do lock that. Hopefully this is a good enough angle that you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm also still able to do what I need. So I will never go over 10 seconds on each side. I'm usually closer to six to eight seconds. And then I just do it a couple times. Um, just so I don't accidentally overheat their brain. And then I will pop the caps off and she'll be done. I'm sorry, honey. So when I use the iron, I rotate it a little bit around the nub, just in case there's one spot on the iron that's not as hot. Um, but you want to get a nice copper ring. When I first started this budding, saying a copper ring was a little confusing. What I think is a copper ring could be different than what someone else thinks is a copper ring. So with me, I just get through the layers until I can uh, take the horn bud off. But we do this carefully not to overheat the kid so i let it cool down in between um, and then we just go back in and finish it up um, see here she can get this bud off almost she's got one little side that needs one more touch i know i'm sorry one more. Come on, let me get it. So, here is the little horn nub. That's pretty much all I took off, so that side is done. Good job, sweetheart. Go in and try the other side, which can be rougher because they know what's happening. Um, but yeah, we try to do this as fast as possible. look like I'm putting a lot of pressure on the iron but I'm just holding on to it firmly so I get full contact and it's just, it's a very light pressure on the head don't cram it onto their skull um but yeah I give them a break in between so we let it cool down and they don't get as stressed out I know you're doing so good Almost. We got one more, one more spot. Come on. There. 
I got the second cap off. So she is done. Um, now we will, I'll take my bandage here. Spray that on. This does take a second to dry, so I will usually blow on it as I spray it. Just to make sure that it's dry. I know, sweetheart. And she is done, so we'll see. Um, this is what it looks like when the caps are off. Now, if it was a buckling, sometimes they will recommend you do a figure eight, which would be another circle right about here. That's pretty much what it looks like for mine. I do use a smaller disc budding iron. But we'll go ahead and we'll do her sister. Her sister is way more dramatic, so she might be quite a bit louder. Okay, we got the second little one in the box. Um, like I said, she is more dramatic. Even just picking her up, she screams at me, so she might be pretty loud here. All right, baby. Her nubs are quite a bit bigger than her sister's. All right, hang on, sweetheart. You can't move. It's okay. Okay, so she is more squirmy. side because you're moving too much. Can't get good contact. There's one. Horn up. Good job, sweet pea. One more. I need to get that side a little bit better. Maybe one more time on this side. I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hang on. Almost, almost one more touch. You're doing so good. There you go. I'm gonna put your little bandage on. go we got them both this butted hey, sweetheart so they're gonna go right back out to mom and they'll probably take a nap right after they eat and then they'll be good as new hi sweetheart Okay, so onto tattooing. I put the kids back in the disbudding box for this. So I start with cleaning out the ears. We do rubbing alcohol on a cotton ball and we just clean the inside of the ear. Um, after I put the ink on, I will use a cotton ball to kind of rub the ink in and clean it up a little. I have two tattooers, um, so I don't have to swap out my herd tattoo every single time. This year for registration, the letter is S, so the S will stay in this one, and then I just change out the numbers. He is S1. He was the first kid born this year, so that is the tattoo that I have in the clamp right now. Your herd tattoo goes in their right ear, and the way that I remember it is the right ear is wherever they are a resident to, aka your farm. It gets a little confusing since you are looking at the goat from the front. It's always the goat's right and the goat's left. So when I'm looking at him straight like this, this is his right ear. The herd tattoo is gonna go in the right ear. And then with these clamps, you want the handles pointing down and you want the foam side behind the ear. So handles down, foam to the back. If you try to clamp this way on the ear, like, like this with the handles up, your tattoo is going to be upside down. So the left is your letter year we're following the ADGA letters. So they are gonna cry when you do it. Be prepared for them to jump and pull away. What we're aiming for is right in between these two veins. So you see this line 
and this line. We want to get the tattoo right in between those and not hit the vein. In every ear, you're going to try and find this flat piece right in the middle in between both of these veins, and that's where you want to get your letters. Uh, side note, I keep all of my tattoo letters and numbers in this little divider. I have two sets of each. Okay, so here is one of our mini Nubian boys. Um, he is S5, so we switched out our number for our uh, left tattoo. Right tattoo is also different for my mini Nubians. They have a different herd tattoo, so we have switched out those letters. I'm going to do the herd tattoo first on him. And with these guys, I tend to go a little further towards the end of the ear. But we'll see. So we have handles down, foam to the back of the ear. And quick clamp. The minis are extra loud. So there is what our tattoo looks like. There is a little bit of blood on it, but not too bad. And then I'll just take our ink, coat it really well, cotton ball, and just rub in the ink a little bit extra. So we'll rub it in pretty good with the cotton ball, and that'll also soak up some of the extra ink so it's not just everywhere. Um, and again, his ears were cleaned with rubbing alcohol before we started. So he's got his herd tattoo in his right ear. In his left ear, we are going to do the year letter and birth order. And we have handles down, foam side to the back of the ear, and a quick clamp. So even though that was pretty quick, we got a nice tattoo on there. And now we'll just rub the ink in. And there we go. He is all done. So there you have it. We have tattoos in both ears for him. So he's all set. If he gets sold registered or unregistered, he still is identifiable with these tattoos. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all you have to do. Thank you for being part of the video, mister. You did good. I'll let you go back out to your mom now.